Reading with Val. Hi guys, my name is Valerie. This month, October, is actually the Filipino American History Month. There was a giveaway by Mary Miranda Cruz. She wanted to give away three books written by Filipino American writers and all of the books I really, really love. And I was really lucky to win the giveaway. Thank you, Miss Mary. And the first book is Any Day With You, which I did not have a copy at home, but I loved. It is by May Recipico and How to Make Friends with the Sea. This book is by Tanya Guerrero. And finally, the book I'm going to be reviewing to you today, Everlasting Nora. And this book is by Mary Miranda Cruz. She uh, wrote a note and uh, she signed her signature. Everlasting Nora is a realistic fiction book, and I would rate this book a 10 out of 10. In this book, Nora lives in the Melania's um, North Cemetery, and it is the largest, uh, it's the largest shanty town in the Philippines. And this is what Nora looks like. Well, why is she there? Her uh, family got in a tragic accident, accident and um, their house burned down, and so Nora's dad. So Nora and her mom have to work, um, have to live at a uh, cemetery. Nora and her mom both work for a lady, and they're cleaners for the, that lady and her family. They make just a little bit of money from that. Um, her mom, she loves Nora. As much as she does, she is not that responsible um, of taking care of their money. And her mom is addicted to gambling, like addicted. And this game that, they, uh, that her mom plays is called Mahjong, and I'm familiar with it because my family plays it for fun, not for money though, um, just with each other, and it's uh, really fun. There's a part that I want to read to you that is a paragraph that I noticed about money. Here it is. Most of the time, she lost all the money she bought with her to the Mahjong game, which was usually half of whatever we made on a washing job. She'd come home at dawn irritated, muttering to herself as she crawled under the calabo to lie down. I'd keep my back to her and pretend to be asleep, relieved that she had come home. There were times when she did win, but it wasn't what I would consider winning big. Instead of saving it, Mama would go out and spend it on silly things like a fancy pair of sequined Bombay slippers for herself or a plastic Hello Kitty coin purse for me. I have to look decent enough so they'll let me play, you know, she'd say as she admired her, the new pink cotton dress that she bought with her winnings. I'd frown and tell her it looked expensive. And um, that's basically saying that her mom is not at all responsible for taking care of their precious money, which they have very little of. Saving money, and especially when you're in financial trouble, is really um, key and it really important. And her mom, I'm not saying that she's a bad person, she's an amazing person, but sometimes she just, she doesn't know how to care to Nora. Um, but anyways, one day, her mom just leaves for a game, like a Mahjong game, and Nora, like this happens a lot, so Nora doesn't say anything about it. But her mom like never came back, like that night and the night after. She has a friend and his name is Jojo. He's 13 and he lives with his aunt, a relative of his, um, and called um, Lola Mercy and they live together in the same neighborhood. And so when um, Nora found out that her mom wasn't coming back for 
I guess like not not soon. Then she went to Jojo, and Jojo invited him her to stay over. And Jojo is super super nice. He's super funny. And there's a really dangerous character in this book that I absolutely hate. His name is Tiger. Tiger. He works for a guy who's really wealthy. He had a he has a record of beating people up, killing people, uh, and like whatever like bad. One thing that is really important to Jojo is that Tiger actually killed his best friend, and he always hated Tiger so much. And they've had a couple of times where they met in this book. I'm going to、uh, show you one. Jojo covered his nose with his hands, blood dripping through his fingers. Um, and then a hiss escaped from Tiger's clenched teeth. His eyes and nose were pinched together in anger. He stood over Jojo, a wicked grin spreading on his face when he saw the blood oozing out of Jojo's nose. You're gonna regret you ever tried to mess with me. He kicked Jojo in the stomach. Jojo curled into a ball. And Tiger began kicking, it, kicking him everywhere: his back, his head, and his legs. Oh my God, he's gonna kill him! I had to stop this, but what can I do? And, um, ah, jeez, I do not like reading that out loud because when I actually see the mind moving in my head of like a thirteen-year-old boy and like twenty-year-old person or up. Kicking Jojo like really powerfully. It's really sad. I don't know. Jojo's a really nice person. He's really kind, and he does not deserve to be treated like this. It is a journey about how Nora and Jojo、uh, deal with Tiger, how they survive, and how Nora learns so many lessons from her mom leaving. And my favorite character in this book, though. Is either Nora or Jojo. Jojo's super kind, funny, and smart. He's really strong, and he tries to protect Nora as if he were his own relative. And Nora, I love Nora because she is,、um, she's a really calm person. She's just really, really nice. She's,、um, she's a really mature girl for her age too. I would recommend this book to kids between the ages nine through twelve. And this book does have some violent parts,、um, but it's、uh, a really great book. And it's such an emotional book, and you can feel a lot of feelings that Nora feels or Jojo feels. I hope you guys、um, get to read more books by、um, Filipino American authors, and Happy Filipino American History Month! Thank you guys for watching, and remember to read on, have fun, and dream big. See you guys later. Bye.